on. And we're live. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming out and joining us for the first discussion of the Inheritance Trilogy read along. We're going to be talking about, one second, I'm using it as a computer stand shortly, but I'll bring it out. <laughs> the Inheritance Trilogy, <laughs> The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms specifically. Um, and yes, I'm joined today by all of my lovely co hosts, and we're going to do like a quick round robin of introductions. Um, I'll just call on people because I don't know how it's displaying on people's screens, but I'm Chloe with this one verse. Um, yeah, from my channel. Thanks for being here. Uh, Shay, can you introduce yourself real quick? Yes, also, am I answering the question too, or no, just that part? Oh, right, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> and our introduction question is um if you were a god in the hundred thousand kingdoms what would your nature be um and i i it's bad because i came up with a question but i didn't really think about it i feel like it would be something like see it or not how those was just like inconsistent it's just like subject to change and inconsistent i feel like that would be me <laughs> Okay, so um, hi everybody. I'm Cache. My channel is Shay with the Hobbies. I write short stories, poetry, and occasional blog post. Um, and uh, if you don't know, my channel has been the one we've been doing a reading sprints on, so it's been really, really fun and dope to do that. Um, here's the thing. I don't want to say this because this is my least favorite character throughout the entire series, but the truth is, my nature would be Etempesis. I do not change. Um, I'm a creature of habit. I'm the same all the time. So there's that. Oh, Bria uh, pointed out that we are joined by some of the creators of the Missy Elliott Read Along, which is going to be happening next month. If you want to talk Thank about that you. real quick. <laughs> um, yeah, okay, okay. So for those of you guys who don't know, the Missy Elliott Readathon is the first of our annual hip hop readathons. And there are seven prompts that go through. The theme this year is the greatest hits tour. So we got songs from Missy's albums throughout the years. Um, it's really laid back. We got two group reads, Waiting to Exhale by Terry McMillan, and You Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. You can read those two books and cover all seven prompts. So stress free. Don't, don't get upset, you know, chill out. But the number one thing is they must be books written by black authors. And that's black with a big B, with a big B, black with a big B, with a big B. Okay. But, you know, just to make sure you know. Hi, everyone. My name is Shomla, um, a.k.a. Miss Awesome Saucy. Um, what would be my nature? I have no clue. I just, maybe whatever happens, happens, that kind of nature. I'll just let whatever happen, happen. You wouldn't be like the patron goddess of romance readers or something? I feel like that's who you were in this read, in this read along. <laughs> sure, I'll take that. I'll be the patron Hi. goddess of Nahadol's fangirling. Uh oh. This had Not the head of the hero. <laughs> Not the head of the harem. Okay. So hi, y'all. I'm Britt. My channel is Britt Riley. It's a book and author too. We're talking about the intersections of literature and culture. Um, if I were a god, my nature would be a cross between a tempest and Enifa, where it wouldn't be like, this is the order, nothing ever changes. It would be more like routine, but routines can shift but there is a certain structure to it. So it wouldn't be total chaos, but it would be, it would be routine. I'd be the God of routine. I think I'm supposed to go next. I'm Deidre, everybody. My channel name is Shay Tree Reads. Um, and if I, my nature would, like if I were a God in this, universe my nature would be i'm trying to think because it's kind of going to be something between sia and um Inifa because i like the carefree and just playful manner of sia and like kind of the immaturity of it all but he has a wisdom in that immaturity even though it's because of his years or whatever 
but he still is very playful with everything until it's time to go and he's it's time to ride it's like you know it's whatever and with Enifa she kind of has a balance between um I think of being strict and being willing to change and I like that about her so we're gonna somehow I don't know because kids like routine so that's what we're gonna go with like they like their nap time at a certain time have their plate ready at a certain time and make sure you cut the crust so there's that about it so that's me uh hello i'm emory my channel is emory empowered um where i just kind of talk about lots of books and do reading sprints a lot um if i was a god in this universe i i don't know i've been trying to think while well, y'all went i'm a, i'm an exceptionally protective person so it would have to be something with that. I'm very protective of my family. Um, uh, so yeah, something something along those lines. <laughs> I could see that, like a Zakarn and a Nefla kind of combined. But this, Deidre brought up a very important question. Do you think C is a crust on or crust off type of kid? I think it depends. And I think whatever, whenever it is, you better get it right. <laughs> I think, I think he he's too, cut it in a fun I, shape. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of that, you know, like a little impression, the smiley face impression on the toast, you know. If it's a cheese sandwich, cut my crust off. If it's a ham sandwich, leave it on and toast the bread. You know, it just depends. It just depends. I could see that. So I thought next would be good to like give a summary of the book since I know a lot of people finished it like a week into the, the read along. Um, so your memory might be a little rusty. Um, they don't want to start us off. <laughs> All right, so boom. It started off with 19 year old Yana, right? And she get this invitation and she take this long at trip to her granddaddy palace. This man is not a good man, right? He just, he, she come there thinking he didn't off to her mama because she off got off in her sleep. So she plotting on revenge from day one. Like, I mean, you got my mama, I'm going to get you. That's how it starts. Anybody want to continue from there? No, I want you to keep going. <laughs> I left the I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. Okay, let me get back in character then. Okay. All right, so she show up, right? And she walk in there and he like, you don't look like her. And she kind of like, Bleh. but she keep it together, you know? Cause where she come from, see, here's what I, I'd say she come from the hood. They call her a barbarian. Now, you know how we feel about words like that, right? It reminds me of savages, but let's not continue then. So. Um, she talking to her granddaddy and he like, yeah, uh, so I'm about to name you heir, uh, which in their world means you about to die for, for those of y'all. It's not like, oh, you getting a lot of money. It means you gonna die. Um, and so she meets her cousin. He had a redhead with a long braid. His name to real to real to real. Like he run the house. Like he run the palace. He tell everybody what to do. So like the crazy part is, is everybody that work here is related to everybody else. Now, here's the thing, y'all. We got to remember, this is not America. This is not our world. They be sleeping with each other. Let's just go ahead and get there out there. They be messing around with each other. And that's just what they do, and they don't think no way of it. Um, I personally felt some type of way, but it's okay. Uh, so, Terrell is like, hey, yo, we need to get you to Varane. He's sketchy. We'll get to him later. I need to get you to Varane. He need to put this sigil on you. Here come this bitch, Samina, right? Okay, so Samina happened to be her cousin. And Samina happened to be the person that everybody think is going to rule the country because she ruthless. She like, if it need, you know, if you got to die, you just got to die. I mean, somebody got to go. That's, that's Samina. So Samina is like, hey, cousin. But it's not like a good hey, cousin. And so she seeks the night lord on Yana. Okay, so here's the thing, y'all. The night lord is my second favorite character okay because see is my favorite i can't lie to you but the night lord is my, my second favorite character and in this moment 
it's uh the sun about to go down and like the nighttime is his time. So Samina kind of like six the night lord on Yana and uh she got to run for her life. And uh out pops my favorite. See you like hey yo, I'm about to rescue you real quick. Let's hop in through these walls. Ain't nobody going to find us. And uh he do find them unfortunately. And then uh he chokes Sia out. And he chokes Sia out and Yana like not Sia and she stab him. Now, here's the thing. Yana knows that all these people are gods. So why she thought stabbing a god was going to work, I don't know. But let's call it motherly instincts, okay? So uh, they're like talking to her and Sia says something along the lines of, uh, we ain't going to do it like this. We said we was going to do it a different way. Yana like, well, we going to do a different way. What you mean? What's going on? She peeping stuff, but she not really peeping stuff. Because again, y'all remember, she on, a, she on a mission to get the person who killed her mama. So she like halfway listening to stuff, right? Then what happened? Let's see. Skip forward. Oh, she like, oh, I'm going to go meet with Rely. Now, here's the thing. Rely and Samina are the other heirs and they siblings. And um, Rely kind of drunk. And he really don't got too much going for himself. Um, and so she like think she gonna go and kind of like get some favor with him and rely like, I mean, I can't really do nothing for you. And she realizes that and that becomes a thing. So let's see, this is two weeks. What else happened in two weeks? She go to the consortium and has to stand there and listen to stuff. And, uh, Ooh, rise on she, rise on she come and talk to her in the bathroom. And she like, are you Aaron Mary or are you dark? Whose side are you on? Is you or ain't you? Also gives her a little bit of information. Like, you know, your mama, your mama, you know, you know, your mama, your mama. Here's the thing about Yana. Yana feel like she know her mama. Here's the truth. You know a version of your mama. We all know the parent after they become a parent. You don't know who that was before that. So Yana decides, I'm about to do some digging. Who know my mama and why she left and what's going on? Because y'all been talking a little out y'all side of y'all neck about my mama and how she act and I don't like it. So I'm going to go digging for myself. She go to her mama room, find some little love letters from her mama and her daddy. And she's like, oh, my mom and dad was so in love. Hey, <laughs> little did she know. She go ahead and, you know, get on out of there and whatnot. And then uh, her and Tavril decide they going to be a little bit more than cousins. And uh, Tavril didn't understand the assignment. So she go to run herself a bath. And Naha, though, um, got fingers like a concert pianist, apparently. And that's the end of that. So as she's, like, left to kind of come to herself, on this bathroom floor, um, she realized she might be playing a little bit of a dangerous game. I mean, she brave, but like, she also looking like she's trying to die low key. So then she like, okay, I'm gonna go do all this research and go to this library. It was a library. It was a library. And, uh, she see that there's like a little crack in the bookshelves and she looked behind there and there happens to be these three beautiful portraits of the three gods. And one of them just happened to kind of sort of look like her. And, uh, she faint, which, you know, to be fair, makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense, right? And so then she finds out, I feel like we in like chapter 14 or so when she find out that um there's a goddess inside her um, and it's been her since, since day one. Um, and uh, she might also have found out that it's there because her mama kind of sold her to the other gods for their freedom. And so then she's like, well, maybe I don't know my mama as well as I thought. I did. But also, my mama did try to kill me after I was born, so maybe she did feel a little guilty for what she did. So maybe I still do know my mama. Um, Again, wishful thinking, but whatever. Um, And so she keep on, like, digging. And, oh, I forgot to tell y'all about Varane. Here we go. So this little mug, he, uh, he, he, he's smart. He, like, real smart. And so they sent him to go be a Scrivener. Now, Scriveners are people that learn the God's language and how to do stuff. Now, to me, if we were to compare them to someone, to me, they kind of like overseers. That's kind of what I was getting from Varane. He kind of like an overseer. Um, and so uh, uh, Varane fell in love with Kenneth. For those of you guys who don't know, Kenneth is Yana's mother. And uh, Varane... Seemed to think that Kenneth was in love with him. Here's the truth. Um, Kenneth 
like her daughter, is a one-track mind. And connect like her daughter would do anything for her mama. And here's the truth. Her daddy killed her mama when she was five years old. And uh, she figured it out and was like, I'm going to get this mug. And she got like, that's what she did. She was like, okay, uh, let me talk to the inner father and find out what I got to do to uh, get rid of this. And they was like, I mean, uh, you can go marry somebody that's real low class that uh, he ain't going to be cool with. And I mean, I bet you he like, she ain't part of the family no more. Uh, who does she happen to find? The man that ends up being Yana's dad. Now, how Yana feel about this? You know, it's a thing that happened, right? Uh, and so then... We find out that Varane, little happy-go-lucky self, decided that uh, since she married somebody in light, I'm going to go sit in the walking. Oh, no. Here's the thing. Varane don't know that he set off a chain of reactions that ends up being his own demise. Because, bruh, had you not done that, she would have never came back to the palace to try to get her husband free of the walking dead. And now she would have made a deal with the father so that her husband gets to live. For those of you guys that don't know, that's how Yana has two souls. Now, where did I leave off? What else do I got to say? Oh, okay. So, uh... There's like Dar. a little... Huh? What'd you say, Lloyd? Oh, so they go to Dar, her and Nahadu. Oh, yeah. So, she like, um... All right, uh, Roz, oh, she is like, oh, yeah, you know, uh... Somebody about to go to war with your people, and I think you should do something about it. She's like, oh, you know, okay. Uh, Night Lord, let's go make a trip. And uh, she goes to make a trip, and uh, she finds out one, her grandma know the Night Lord. And she's like, wait a minute, y'all had conversations. What's going on? And uh, then uh, grandma like, also be respectful. I don't know who, who you've been around. You've been over there for like a week and a half and forgot all your home training. I need you to get it together. And uh, finds out there are people marching against them. So then... Yeah, and like, you know, uh, let's go to these people's house. You know, let's run up on them and talk to them about some stuff. You know, I got a proposition for them. And uh, she like, uh, I don't want you to kill nobody, but I, you know, I just want you to, I don't want you to be there, Naha. And, you know, here's the thing that we know about Naha. Um, he cannot be controlled, right? We, we know that that's a thing. If we don't, I'm telling you now. Uh, so she like, uh, y'all, I don't understand why y'all doing this to my people. Like, da, da, da. I mean, well, one, we been wanting to do it. And two, now we got the money to do it. So it's like three, we going to do it. She's like, oh, okay. Um, so let me just kind of strike one of y'all. And so somebody start to turn the diamonds. Then somebody like, I'm going to touch him. Now, why are you going to touch somebody that's already starting to turn the diamonds? I don't know. But then you start to turn the diamonds. And then Yana's like, you know, I want you to stop. But the truth of the matter is, I can't show no fear. So uh, kill him. And so, you know, that happens. And then she go back. And I feel like it might not be right then. But uh, you not how I get to knocking some boots. And uh, in the words of Sia, it's like, taste in the bottom of the universe and uh i'm not saying that i ever want to know what that feels like because it sounded miraculous but also i feel like your life flashes before your eyes and i personally don't want that experience so there's that um and so then uh see you come in or no she wake up next to the naha that is human and he like you know what i mean you must got something because you still alive. This room looked like a tornado hit it, but here you go. You know, I had to clean you up. You got ashes on you and stuff. I don't know what y'all was doing, but y'all was doing a lot of things is all I'm saying. Sia come in and Sia kind of like, now here's the thing. Sia and Naha be jealous of each other. And you know, it's like that daddy, father, they a little icky love, if we being honest. I don't know why you a little jealous or whatnot, but you know, he a little jealous. But he also like, Hey, our experiment worked a little good. We we might be we might be able to get out of this mob. Yeah. Cause you know they've been locked up for a few centuries and whatnot. So uh it's about time now for the ceremony in which uh Yana is like, I guess I gotta die. And you know, here's the thing: if I perish, I perish is the thought, but um, that's not really how I go down, right? So uh they show up to this thing and Bray acting real strange. He just acting real weird. And yeah, like, why he looking at me like that? Why he moving this way? And um, they standing there and uh, Varane kind of like stab her in the stomach. And like, she fall out. And uh, next thing we know, she having an out of body experience. And she like, wait, there's a God there. And there's a God there. And there's a God there. And let's not talk about Kuru Wei and how this girl was a traitor. Because she like... Ooh, uh, all you had to do, daddy, was say that you were sorry so a tempest could like let us free and you didn't want to do it. So I took the bigger step. Now, here's the thing. 
in this moment, I knew Kudere was going to die. I don't know why she didn't know she was going to die, but you know, she died. Um, so, uh, Yana, uh, gets reincarnated. And the crazy part is in the moment that she get reincarnated, the Carter was like, I'm going to show E. Tempest that I still ride for him, even though E. Tempest was just like, you know, we get rid of all these people. We, I ain't want them no way. And if I ain't here, it's just me and you. Remember what it was like? It's just me and you. It's just me and you. And we was tight. You remember that? And the Carter like, well, okay, it sounds like he might want to get rid of us. Let me show him my loyalty. And then whoop, the stone is gone. And Yanny is like rising like Lazarus come forth. And uh, she like, okay, let me just go ahead and get get everybody right so uh kudere uh i love you but you gone uh naha like samina come here bring me that neck let me pull a chain on you. uh varane is dead in this moment that just kind of is a thing uh samina kind of tried to gut her brother and i just feel like i don't know why we let her get that far i feel like rely you know rely kind of did help in the end i forgot to tell y'all this but rely was like hey yo if you choose me for air uh i got these mercenaries now mind you don't nobody like me up north but i got these people and these money and you know i can go ahead and help you here's the thing they thought it was gonna work now why yana and rely knew about scriveners and knew what they could do and neither one of them use them you know we just gonna pray for the human ignorance that was that situation and you know uh she was like uh jacquard can you go handle dar real quick jacquard was like i'm on it uh so then you know it's a uh, yana naha any e. tempest here's the thing a e. tempest been living in varane vicariously every now and then ever since kenneth came back to the house Kenneth was like, I need my man fixed. And uh, the uh, Varane was like, you know, Etempis, I'll give you my life if you give me my woman. Now, here's the thing. Gods cannot control people's feelings and emotions. So uh, he he got a losing bargain from jump, like from jump. But then uh, it kind of occurs to Naha that like, you've been in Varane this whole time and I ain't even know. So you mean every time this man been telling me to do something that been you this whole time? So Naha like, come on, let's square up. And Yanny like, eh, we can't do that. We gotta move a little different. You know, he need to learn a lesson. And uh, we we gonna we gonna we gonna punish him a little different way. And Naha was like, I don't like it, but you know, um, I'll defer to you on this. I'll defer to you on this, cause Yanny tells us, and she makes sure that we realize that the truth is, they can't exist without each other. They need all three of them. So they got to get it together somehow. And the truth is, is that Enifa will never die because some part of her will always be alive. And some part of her is always going to find herself to come bring back herself to life. And um, I feel like that was the end of the story. And I cried a couple of tears. So, yeah, um, that's the abridged version. I'm also out of breath. Yeah, I think that was everything. That was a very thorough summary. Very thorough. You kind of dug yourself into a hole now because I've seen multiple requests for you to do reviews like this from here on out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to click in the comments. I'm just going to ignore the chat that said that. I didn't see it. I don't see multiple it. People. Multiple. It's a lot of people. It's like five people. I'm just letting you know. I'm a reminder, y'all. She's not gonna be able to say she didn't know. What's next, Chloe? Now that we're all caught up. Yep, now that we're all caught up. Um, so a lot of us read the um, fifth season for the uh, Broken Earth read along. And I was wondering how you thought that compared in terms of your reading experience with this book. I just want you to know that I did not do that. Well, if you didn't read it, you don't have to answer the question. Okay, it was like I've read one and a half of them and that was months ago, so I can't, can't contribute. Are you asking about the whole series or just book just one? Just the first one. Oh. I'll go first because um, I'm reading it for the first time. Um, and uh, it, I can't compare the two experiences. And I think I would be saying the same thing about whichever one I read first. It just so happened that I read the fifth season first um, because that was the first time I had ever, not even just as an adult, but I had ever read a fantasy 
slash sci-fi. I didn't even know that was a thing <laughs> at the time. Written by a Black author with Black characters. So I just didn't know that was a thing. So, and her writing is so unique um, that, like I said, I would be, I would have all the same feelings about this and saying that about it <laughs> if I had read it first. Um, I do think that they're completely different and I get different feelings from them because I think um, we haven't talked about ratings or anything like that, but I think I gave the fifth season four stars just because I didn't even know what rating a book was at the time either, really. Like, I didn't really have an understanding for that. Like, I didn't have the vocabulary. I didn't have the range. I didn't have none of that <laughs> um, at the time. And I think I read it for the first time in 2019. Um, so, like, you know, I think I'm going to give this five stars um, strictly on just the feeling that I got from it. Um, and I think if I were to reread the fifth season, now, after having read this, I think I would bump that up to five stars. But anyway, that was a long answer. I didn't know that you meant. Sorry, uh, I didn't. I didn't know that you meant the first one. Okay, I didn't read the entire series, but I got to. I got through book one. I stopped in the middle of book two. So they're very, very different. Like I, I feel like book. I feel like the Inheritance Trilogy, like the 100,000 Kingdoms, is fantasy, and the fifth season is sci-fi. When N.K. Jemison talks about the difference between fantasy and sci-fi, she's, like, she said in her master class that, this, that it sort of switched in the middle from being sci-fi to fantasy, just based on like how deeply the magic systems were explained. But I found comparatively i found both of the worlds overwhelming just i felt like it was washing over me i also felt like i was not smart enough to even get that book a rating i was like i mean i'm sure some of the things i'm saying i didn't like had a real reason and i just don't know enough to appreciate the fine art of what you're doing um so i thought the fifth, the, the fifth season was an experience but i didn't feel like i could fully grasp exactly what was happening but I was still here for it and willing and wanting to like read it again pay closer attention so I could get what was going on and it was kind of the same way in um the 100,000 kingdoms, the 100, kingdoms the first time except for with the fifth season it was like the depth of the explanation she was giving that was overwhelming like the tectonics of the plate I was like I'm we can't uh, mm, tectonics. I don't, know, I don't know, but with the hundred thousand kingdoms, it was the depth of the like the first page where where Yaney gives her first name. Upon like physically looking at the book, I knew then that I was in over my head. I was like, she's she's done so much work to to be immersive, and I am immersed. That's why I feel over. Well, so I always feel overwhelmed when I'm reading Jemison, but I don't think it's a bad thing anymore. I think it's just how immersive her worlds are and her voices are always really unique. Um, with the POV is way it went in the, first, in the fifth season. And then with having this sort of like, not an unreliable narrator, but a narrator who is like, literally like talking out this story, like she's talking to the reader. So like second person, but also like second person where she's like, wait, did I already say that? No. Yes, I did. And then at some points, like she's talking to Anna for where she's like, stop behaving this way. This is ridiculous. Like just the voice really kept me engaged in both of, in both of these first books. So I guess, and then the ending. At, that, at the point that I read The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms the first time, I don't know that I'd ever read a book where the protagonist died. And I certainly never read a book where the protagonist died and then came back in a, in a different way. Like, I'd never seen the protagonist be transmutated. So it was just like the different, it was just the way that I was like, okay, possibilities are here. Those in that way, all of Jimison's writing is the same like that for me because I feel like I'm always finding something that I had never seen done in a way that somehow makes perfect sense. There ends my TED talk on comparing and contrasting the fifth season and Hundred Thousand Kingdoms. Thank you for coming. Please tip your waiters. So for me, um, yeah, like everyone said, that 
Hundred Thousand Kingdoms and Fifth Season are two totally different um, stories. For this one, I was a lot more, I knew what was happening a lot more. Like I could get it straight, but for the fifth season, like the first 50%, I was like, what the hell is going on? I was like, I'm so confused. And like Britt said, she went so into depth about the tectonics, you know, geology, everything like that. So that also threw me. But um, I actually prefer the fifth season more than this one. But I still did enjoy this one thoroughly. Um, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, they're two different stories. So you'd have two different reactions to these stories. So that's what I thought. What do you think, Emma Ray? Um, I loved both of them so much. <laughs> I've also only never read the first, uh, the fifth season, and I loved how complicated it was. And I don't know if it, it probably is because I really enjoy reading science and things that I can't explain. Like my favorite genre to read is books about astrophysics because I love to challenge myself and try to um, understand topics that you know, teachers told me I was too stupid to learn about. So I'm constantly reading things that are going over my head and then reviewing and being like, okay, what did I, did I really understand this? So the, I loved how in-depth the fifth season was because it was like a challenge to understand where the story was going to go and why I needed all of this information. So I need to read the other books because <laughs> I'm very, very much intrigued about it. Um, I liked how uh, fast you can read through both of the books. Like she sucks you into both of these stories so fast that you can devour them so quick because you're like, oh my God, I gotta know what happens next. And I think that's absolutely amazing and such a talent that every book I've read from her, I've felt like I'm like plopped in this world and then have to find my way <laughs> and observe these characters. I think I rated the fifth season five stars and then definitely rating this one five stars. Um, I'm just definitely really excited to read more. <laughs> um, so for me, uh, like Deidre, um, the uh, Broken Earth trilogy was my first like into sci-fi fiction fantasy any of that um, and uh, I've said this before like so the reason that I read it was it was the article had come out about her winning the Hugos for all three and my boyfriend had found the article he's like hey we gotta read it and I was like we want to know about it but like I mean nah she a black woman she won all three we just gotta read all three I mean it's gotta be good so uh, uh, the prologue is hard and uh, your girl almost did not ethics. So I was like, I don't understand what's going on. And he's like, nah, let's run it back, start over, and let's go through it. Um, we finished the first one and then devoured the other two in less than a week. And so uh, same thing happened when I uh, got the audio books of the Inheritance Trilogy. And then, like now, I go back and forth between which one is the best and which one is my favorite because they are both so drastically different, but they both like had me wrapped up in the story and the characters and what was going on. And I'd never read anything like it before and or after. Like the only person who can surpass her is herself for me. Like, and so I, uh, I feel like because to me, they talk about two different black experiences in science fiction and fantasy to me. I think that's the other reason they're so different, right? Like I feel like in the fifth season, like it's just black people are ragas and that's like explicitly easy to see. And then I feel like in the Inheritance Trilogy, you're dealing a lot more with like, for all intents and purposes, purposes Yanni is biracial and her biracialness is a big issue throughout the whole story. So like for me, I just thought I loved that she was able to take these two genres to talk about things that deal with us and get white people to love them and be on it and not even know that you are siding with us the whole time, but okay. I'm gonna go through some of the comments. Heather said, I feel like the 100,000 Kingdoms was a much easier reading experience for the fifth season. I have five starred books, but they're wildly different. I would agree with that. I don't know what it was, but the fifth season, I remember, took me a while to get through, even though I was, like, I loving it. more traumatic, honestly. Like, yeah. I feel like it's more traumatic, the fifth yeah. season. 
Jersey Thumb says, I can't compare, but I prefer the Inheritance Trilogy. First one's five stars for me. Fifth season's three. Nicole says four, not how to the stars. <laughs> I think that's all the comments. Yeah. I, I think the fifth season is my preferred one, but it's also hard to say at this point because I've like read both the series through. I think my feelings on that are kind of also shaped by like the arc of the series after this. So I don't know if that's really a fair comparison. Um, we talked a little bit about uh, Yaina or Yaina. Um, how did you like her as a protagonist? And like, what did you think of her, you know, where she's from, the country of Dar, and like her relationship with her mother and all that? Uh, Shoma, you want to start? Sure. Um, um, I remember Shay said in one of the sprints that people are always saying that N.K. Jemison always has a mother-daughter relationship in one of her series. So um, I think this one, I, I liked the arc of her not knowing who her mother was or actually was. And she had her own perspective of who her mother was. And she went on to discover little by little who her mother was um also i thought she was she was a good character her character arc was um going from a naive girl she came to the sky thinking everything's honky dory she might not die but she did end up dying and now she's a goddess um yeah i i enjoyed it What about you, Emma Ray? I know you had talked a little bit in the Discord about what you thought of Dar as a country. Yeah, I thought it was just all the symbolism within it is really interesting. And then after, like, a lot of the things that Yaney would talk about about being biracial is just so heavily relatable. <laughs> Especially when it came to like being around the Air Mary and the Air Mary being like, oh, your dad's Dar. Yuck. And then going to Dar and then people being like, ugh, your mom's Aaron Mary. <laughs> like being in this like in between. Um, I liked how she was so like I think at one point I had said her mom was my favorite character because I wanted to know more about her because I liked learning about her only through the lens of her daughter and information that she got from asking people questions and then immediately being like, no, my mom would never do that. My mom never act like that. And then being like, yeah, it does your mom. <laughs> she's not going to treat you how she's been treating all of us. And so I liked that all the information we got and how that character was formed was based on in outside information or like letters she found or just like really interesting things. Um, and I liked how her, her overall knowledge of what her like main goal was going to be started to transform the more she started being like, oh, okay, I now understand what's going on and having to understand what was going on before her, before she was born and everything. And that all compiling to the end, I just thought was very beautifully done. I liked Yana as a protagonist. Um, I think it was interesting. We talked, I think, during one of the sprints. Well, I think we talked a little about Yana as a protagonist in the sprints in the Discord, but just like how she's very different from Eslin in terms of like the ending of the story. Um, and also like I guess in terms of like her goals, where it feels like how to she like came in to find out what happened to her mother and like throughout the course of the story that just has to shift so much. She has to like keep abreast of like all these other things that are going on. Um, I thought her relationship with her mom was interesting because like mothers are very important in the story too. Like she finds out that she's kind of sees mom, even though like she's not really sees mom. She's not an Enifa anymore. Um, and like it's like all the complications of family in the palace of sky. Um, I remember really liking that she was like a warrior character the first time I read it and like how often she like brings that up. Like in terms of like her like just like staring at people and not pecking down from stuff or like her being like uh i can't let timberl handle this like i can't <laughs> like i have to handle it i'm in charge here i'm the warrior um stuff like that i wasn't particularly attached to her um in the same way that i was to assume or so, is it cyanide? I forgot. I forgot her. I forgot the other characters' names. But um, 
Um, I wasn't, I like was attached to almost everybody else a little bit more than I was, yeah, you know. And I wanted to know more. Like, I just felt like she was a vessel for the story. And I mean, in like a lot of different ways. And, and that's good, but I didn't feel any like connection with her. I didn't feel any similarities because of just like my personal experience and just her life. I just didn't feel any connection with her. Um, but I did not, that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. I, didn't, I don't need to be super connected to the main character um, to still like the story or like what's being told. So I was just like, I think every other book I've read by Jemison, I've been a, attached to the main character um in like a meaningful way so it was just different for me like it took me a while to get invested in the story it was probably like 30 percent because i didn't have anything in common with yana so that was definitely different um so for me uh i'm a little bit different so uh, in a uh, fifth season sinai was my least favorite version of assume I could not stand Sinai um, because like to me, it's super pro black. All I saw was this is assimilation. Like, come on, you gotta do better. You gotta do better. Stop believing this stuff they feeding you. You gotta do better. So she was my least favorite character. Um, and I loved uh, I loved Asun and I loved um, Demaya. And so I got attached to them. With Yana, Yana I did not get attached to Yana in the same way, like the characters I got attached to were Nahado and Sia, like I like got attached to them, uh, specifically because I felt like those, the similarities to what they were going through, I guess I could understand more. Um, but I, as the story progressed, the storyline with the mother like resonated so much with me because my grandmother raised me. Um, and so my grandmother and who she is that raised me was different than the mother she was when she raised my mother and my uncles and aunt. And that's different from the young woman that my aunts on my father's side know because they're like a, a decade or so older than my grandmother. So like they knew her in a different way than even they did. And so I remember having to go through my own journey of like coming to terms with what you guys know of her and what you guys are telling me of her and what I know that she wouldn't do now, but also learning that like, she probably did do that back in the day. And the closer that we got, um, I, had, I saw Heather saying like, when you get to know your parent outside of them being a parent, and me and my grandmother getting that friendship, like I got to see that, like, nah, I could see, totally see that you did that. So even after finding stuff after she passed away, like in the same way that Yana did, like, it's like, even if I don't like what I'm hearing, I know her well enough to know like, yeah, she probably did do that. So that part of the storyline definitely resonated with me, especially because I read it and am rereading it after my grandmother passed away. Yeah, and I think she also has trouble coming to terms with like who her mother used to be because she really doesn't like the Aramari and it's like really hard for her to understand that like I don't know, her mother is like quintessential Aramari. Like everyone's like, she's like the Aramari's Aramari, like she's the best we could do. Um and it's like a lot for her to swallow that um, you know, her mother wasn't particularly interested in helping the Enifada or she you know she wasn't very nice to Tibral when she met him like he was just like another servant boy and she never really got to meet him. Um, so yeah, I think that was interesting as well. Like just like the myth that she'd like built up in her head about what her mother would have been like and like how they were different. Like, like I feel like everyone always tells her that she's lacking. Like, oh, your mother never would, your mother wouldn't have even shed a tear. Your mother wouldn't have looked away. Like you can never be like your mother. Um, and it's just like interesting that the relationship that she like, has with her mother in her head and like how it's how it's different because everyone has different experiences with, with her and like yeah I guess what that means for her and her values uh Shay sorry Shay Britt um did you want to talk a little bit about what you thought about uh Yana's protagonist sure sure I wasn't raising my hand I was like what's going on over here on this side of the on the head hemisphere but Yes, sure. Uh, here's the thing. I 
every time I read Jemison, I get really overwhelmed. It's I accept it. I really do. I'm just like, all right, I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna be immersed in a really overwhelming way where I feel like I'm overstimulated. Like I don't even know what to look at because I'm like everything is so detailed you could get lost in the detail and the the meaning and the metaphor really anything i i i i'm literally over here scratching my head like i don't i don't really i'm kind of speechless speechless and tongue-tied which is like unfortunate because i'm up here on the screen with a whole mic and everything it's just it's awkward but i really don't know what to think about it anything of it like this is my second time reading it i'm still over here stuttering like yanny i she she's great um which is what i think like i think as a protagonist yanny is like i think that she's the protagonist that we should have had like because she's coming in and she knows enough to inform us but she also is like distant enough from from it all to be like what is going on, which is definitely my question. And so just watching her sort of, her character arc particularly, I found interesting because she goes from being very much concerned with her mother, like trying to get, trying to get revenge or justice or whatever. However, she wants to conceptualize the fact that you want whoever killed your mother to be killed by you. Um, she goes from that to being really concerned with how the Enifada are gonna survive after she dies. And she like takes, interesting. Um, she squares pretty early in the book with the fact that she's gonna die. Like she starts counting down the days. And I'm just like, we're not gonna, we're not gonna struggle against this. Like, but she, she really just like, yeah, this is day six. Okay, I have like 20% of my life left. Now it's a quarter. Now it's 33%. Like she is really just, it was almost bizarre. As in th it was almost surreal. Like am I really coming from the POV of someone who was like, everyone knows is going to die. And it was even more surreal the second time because I knew she was going to die. I was like, it was, it was just a really surreal experience to see it from her and then to also deal with seeing a protagonist from their perspective as they're like, reality is coming undone like you have a whole goddess inside you you're over here having sex with like i don't even know how to conceptualize my and that's perhaps the whole point of not but like everything that happened to her was like overwhelming i really feel like part of the reason why i'm always overwhelmed is because yaney is overwhelmed like she's like i don't I ran and all I thought was away instead of up. Like we get clear instructions. We get told what the situation is. And immediately when something happens that does exactly what is supposed to happen, I'm still like, that's wild, which is how Yanny feels. So I just feel like I'm synced up with her. Hence the reason why I will always be overwhelmed and tongue-tied. I don't, I don't know when I'm going to reach the goddess part of my arc as a reader. But for now, it's my first day in Sky. Every single time I read Hundred Thousand Kingdoms on every single page, it's my first day. I feel like I'll make a great blurb for a review. That was a good though. My a first day there. every day. <laughs> <laughs> so we've mentioned Naha does a little bit. Um, that's like a pretty that romance is like a pretty a large subplot of the book. And I was wondering what people thought of it. And also, like, what did people think of the original title of this book, which was The Sky God's Lover? Um. <laughs> For true? Yeah. Uh, we found an old outline that Jemison put up on her blog. And it had the old title of it. And that had been the title that she'd originally pitched the book as. And it had been changed to The Hundred Thousand Kingdoms. That changes everything to me. It really does. Wow. Wow. I have nothing to say. I'm stay muted. I am just wow. That changes everything to me. I wonder what she was there for at that point. Because if the whole book is that you're his lover, I'm just like, is that not your whole your whole plot and point of being that you're his lover? Right, but the sky god is a tempest. Oh yeah, I'm assuming it's Maha because that's who your real lover is. Wow, 
So she was knocking boots with the bright one. Well, they all were. They all were lovers together. All three of them. Not well, she didn't get to be his lover to the end. She never. She just kissed no, the no, 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 no. I mean, like Enifa was oh the lover the whole time to both of them. Like that's the whole point is they all were getting jealous of each other at different points. That's the whole point of the war. So like that or that's what was it. Through the the what is it the the outline? But I'm curious if it was a different story originally. That's what I'm saying. Cause like this is that that story wouldn't fit. I mean that title that's wouldn't fit the current story. So that's what makes me wonder if it was a different story originally. Like she planned to go a different way, and the characters was like, "Nah, if you want to go left, we need you to go right." Because this Hello? is the story. I said, "I want that one." Right. I could turn her world <laughs> upside <laughs> down two times in a <laughs> row. You feel me? Why are you gonna make him the, the star? I'm the star. Ain't nobody come to see you. <laughs> I'm just saying that that's that, that energy. Ain't nobody come to see you, Otis. Ain't nobody come to see you, a tempest. It should be now. And the sky, the night lord's lover. That's what it should be. Literally. Shama, what were you trying to say? I was trying to say that maybe it was about Nahadok. Because really, this is kind of his story, too. So maybe, I don't know. I would be so interested. I mean, that's book two. Book two being the sky god's lover, I would understand far more. But for sure, just, for sure. But then that makes me wonder is but what if we look at the if we look at the we actually read the outline, what if book two was supposed to be book one? Because like that that wouldn't happened. make any sense now. But yeah, that would be interesting to see if if that if book two is where it started, like where we're going next after kind of like how um Octavia E. Butler's Patternist series is. I think the third book is technically supposed to be the first Interesting. or Octavia Butler had said something that like you can read them all as standalones but that the third was supposed to come first which is very interesting because the story is a generational story and mm -hmm. by the third book you're down a bunch of generations like it starts at, in like the early 1800s and then the uh, mind of my mind, the third book is in the 70s. So it was weird reading that. And I hope I got that correct. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I thought it was like 100%. the books felt odd, out of order to me once I knew that because I was like, I can't imagine reading this third one and then having to go back and read about these characters. So I wonder if it was something similar where maybe, yes, it was out of order and then she went back and like gave us the beginning. I don't think so. I was I like, like that. I was meaning more so like as a writer and you're drafting, like the first idea was the story that ended up being. Oh, but I got also, you. Okay, you sorry. Said, that makes perfect sense to me because I am writing a series in almost that exact way. Like I'm starting right now, but there's like something that happens in the past. That's another thing. But like, that's not the first story. Like, yeah, that's a part of it, but it's not. So like when you said, I was like, See, all these great writers are doing these things. And then I think, and I'm like, yes, that means I'm following great footsteps. That's just all I feel like. That's all I feel like. So. I don't know in terms of Jemison's like thought process, but I like did a quick skim of the outline. It like follows the book like pretty, pretty much like step for step. Like that outline still holds up to 100,000 Kingdoms. Really? Yeah. So, so maybe the gods change? Cause so is the sky god not, or did that change? Cause like that's no, not weird. It's, it's in the and like the whatever you call it, like the hook, like the the, the selling point of it. She refers to the sky dog as a as a tempest still. Okay, so I guess that's the part that threw me. Yeah. So by the sky god's lover, does she mean Naha? So is the book is the I? Cause the only way that I can think of that outline still being the book we have basically with a different title is if it's like painting Nahado as a sort of an, this enigmatic figure of the sky god's lover. And then we find out like his circumstances and how Yanni meets him. Like that's all that I can think about, but that's still kind of a stretch. Right. That that's title. still a big stretch for me. I was like, I see it, but like, then he would be the main character to me and he's not. So like, then it's- You him. mean a Tempest or Naha? Naha. Like if it's the yeah, sky guy, but he's not the protagonist. 
who's not the protagonist, right? So that, I mean, that would be know. very interesting. Now I really want to have her retitle it. Does she say how we got this? No, I don't. She might have, but I don't remember from reading the blog. Interesting. I will say that this title definitely gives, like, I could see it being changed solely because this gives fantasy and that would give me romance. Yeah. Right. A cover I would have to be that book up. Right. I wouldn't have don't picked that up. Don't get me started on the covers. Let's not talk about the covers because okay. every, every <laughs> book I am mad about, like, okay. I guess I guess we have we're here we're here now okay so look at this this is pretty uh, right <laughs> this is beautiful but if I don't know Jemison I'm not picking this up I'm just not picking it up off the shelf I'm not picking it up and the original one off the audio book or maybe not the original but a different one that mm -hmm. has like sky and like a face kind of in the background that makes more sense than whatever. What's this supposed to be, y'all? Is this, this supposed to be, be like kind of like Nat Geo? Like we're gonna go inside the sister's chapel or something? The, I don't I know. It it's giving like church. Me. It's giving Catholicism. It's not giving sky. It's not giving. I'm sorry. They do. They do. There's not enough glass. And I'm just. I'm just. I'm sorry. Not enough glass. I'm sorry. Sky is full of glass. Like you can barely like other than the floor. I'm sorry, in the library apparently. Anyway, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm off my I just really think that she deserves better for her covers. Like this. I feel like they set her up, but this is before that. The first this one is even, this is before that. So now we see how they was doing our girl. This is know, a like, reissue. They 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 did it again. It was like, oh, this is gonna be better, and this is what we got. And I'm mad. I'm mad about it. I'm just upset. She deserves better. She deserves. She better. does. Yeah, those covers for Broken Earth are trash. Three Hugo Awards and you can't change the cover. I feel like they don't know what to do. Like they are, they are as overwhelmed as the enemy. They don't know what to do. Like, I don't think they're gonna change it till it gets to like her ten year anniversary form. Like they need a reason to do it because people are still buying it in droves. Like she's making like fifteen thousand a month at least off of these books. So like they don't necessarily have a reason to. And we know publishing don't do nothing if they don't got a reason to. No, I'm, they're going to put the whatever it's adapted to. They're going to put the actors on the cover or a scene. I don't That's what they're going to do. Or and I'm still going to be mad, but, you know. Oh, she Emma Ray. Uh, I'm or sensing the sodium. Mm -mm, not Reese. What did Emma Ray say? I missed it. Say Reese Witherspoon pick. Yeah, I said, or Reese Witherspoon. Oh, sticker. Um, no, don't put a damn sticker on I it. I will scream. <laughs> um, so we kind of like, Nahado got the short end of the stick in this question. What did people think of that subplot? <laughs> I, I know some it. people are conflicting uh, opinions on Nahado. Oh, no, nah, I, I thought, it, I mean, it made the story interesting. I thought it was a great subplot. Whoever didn't like it. Trash taste. Don't talk to me. Are we talking about the romance subplot? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess she saw the universe or whatever in like the beginning of time. So it was it wasn't odd, like, but then I don't know. It didn't. I'm like Salter in Discord. I'll just I'm with him. This this is where we're at. What is what is he, he, he needs to give more? He just wasn't really like I'm not super all about I'm not on his train. I'm not trying to line up to be the next, you know, universe seer. I'm just he's fine. He can get it. I'm just saying he's not like I'm not trying to be in the harem, you know. That's all I'm saying. I can respect you know, I'm not that either. I just thought like it made to me, I feel like they it made sense. I feel like it made sense. Like, I feel like it would have been weird if you knew she looked like her and didn't like act like you were confused at times. So I feel like it made All sense. All the incest, it was the most acceptable of the incest. Oh, Salter heard his name. Salter's ears were burning. Um, no, oh wait, how was how was Yeda related to Tibral again? Because I thought Shay broke it down. Because I thought yeah, they were just because it's true. And then Shay said, it. no, no, no. <laughs> so here's how it is. So um Samina relied 
and and Terrell's dad are siblings. Mm -hmm. And their uh their dad is the Carter's not brother. that distant of a cousin. So they're first right, cousins. Right. No, so yeah. So okay. it, to me, the humans committed incest, the gods can't commit incest. Right. Y'all like, yeah, ain't got no so pack, but that's no incest. But the the gods, like y'all are gods, y'all wasn't born, y'all don't have parents. Like y'all just came into being, but I like, like fifteenth cousins five times removed. That's what it was too, and then I went back and I literally, y'all, I drew it. I drew it. That I drew it. I did. I need a little. What's the drawing, Shay? Wait, isn't isn't the twins dad the Carter's brother? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. So that that that's to that uh to real's grandpa. It is the Carter's brother. Oh. So Descartes is his great uncle. Yep. I yeah. just found out how great uncles work with a week ago, y'all. <laughs> so yeah. There you go. Descartes and then his late brother. And his late brother has Terrell's dad, the big sister that died, that they don't know how she died, but it was suspicious. And mm -hmm. it's the two. Interesting. Yeah, I thought I did not know they were that close. I'm disturbed. Come on now, Yanny. Got yeah, I, I was like, mm -hmm. Uh, and so for her, she like, well, he half my cousin because he like not that, and I'm half very Mary, so it's not as bad. Like, not nah, girl, it was. No, it was the same. And listen. that's why it was bad. That's why the sex was bad because you wasn't. That's why you were satisfied. Your body was like, I'm gonna have to rebuke this entire like, situation. This you get no pleasure. This is, wrong. this is wrong. That's exactly why. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, then you uh, and risk your life with Naha. I love the cover with the picture of Sky in the face. That's the cover I have. I actually don't mind the original series too. I think they're at least better than the reissue. Yeah, because they give me fantasy. Yeah, that's what I thought when I saw them. Like they give me fantasy. And then Regina Renee doesn't <laughs> understand the Naha love. He's traumatized. Af, I need him after. We'll all be dead before that happens. I don't know. If I don't know if there's any healing for Naha. <laughs> traumatized people need love too. That's how they come out of their trauma is some love. So listen, I don't have to love you romantically though. Right, I didn't say that, but I'm, my love ain't romantic. My love is like, hey, he coming out of these chains. And let's just be honest, y'all. Some people just need their tail whooped. Like, y'all acting like just forgiving people for the stuff they do is enough. Like, nah, I forgive you. You learned your lesson. Nah, you come, You might need to get bent over my knee or I'm be human characters. until you fall in love and see how humans are, you know. Or yeah, just straight up suffering, which I feel like is what Samina is gonna get. And I honestly just can't pluck up anything to be sorry for her. I was yeah, waiting for no, your book. Not, not a mustard <laughs> seed of sorrow, of empathy, like not a feel, man, not a mustard I feel like seed. you killed two of your siblings. Like we know you <laughs> killed one. I feel like your older sister you killed two. That's just me. Wait, what? <laughs> so is her sister the one? You have an older sister. Who's the one who they were like, oh, she disappeared, but oh, people around here disappear, and now I know where they are. Was that her? That's the, the sister. He said, when he, when Terrell says it, because it's on the page that I was just on, he says they, uh, she did, if he's, she died or something, but they don't, the rumors exist about him. Oh, okay, gotcha. So you okay. think that's the did it? Because there, there were four of them originally. Rolad and Samina were the youngest twins, runs in the family. Alas, their elder sister met with an unfortunate accident, or so the official story goes. Gotcha. So okay. that's Samina killed her? Is that what you're saying? Right, and they talk about Samina being the most ruthless and the most ambitious. Like, I think Samina killed her older sister. Like, obviously, we don't know, but I think... Samina got bodies. Makes sense. Right. Yeah, she, bodies. Has she got bodies on her. Mm -hmm. Well, and we know that Rely wasn't doing it. We know Rely, that's not him. He got killed because he was messing with little girls. So, like, can't pluck up any empathy for you either. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie about it. Rely, I was like, I just, I didn't want him to die. We all literally saw it coming. Like, literally, the fact that Yanny was like, I see. It's not funny, but it's just so sad. I feel like Rolod was never going to live. Like, he was never going to go out any other way. But even when he, like, I pick Rolod, he has that five seconds of victory. 
and then Yaney got killed and he was close behind. Like Samina was literally like eyeballing him. Yaney lets us see her see her him being eyeballed and it's just like, and then I turned around and he was dead. Ma'am, we don't even get to witness it. Like you don't even give that man the dignity of someone witnessing his death. He was alive, you turned around, and then you just scanned the room, and there's a human that has blood of her brother. I'm just like, so now we're dissociating. Great. Understood. It was just, her lot lived a sad life, which I feel like is just like part of the course in Sky, but... Like, Samina could have just slit his throat and be done with it, but she had to gut. take all of his organs out. <sighs> oh, that's so harsh. I would, and that's I would, why she gonna I suffer for years. On the literally, dog I was like, "Don't kill her. We don't need to slit her throat like the pig she is. We need to let her whatever she had not her do. It's your turn. Quiet. And I just the chair. Was, was like, like, "Oh, I will kill you. I'm just not yet." I was like, "100% agree." As you should. And I smiled and kept reading. So what did we think of the ending? Because there's a lot of different punishments meted out. What do people think of what happened to everybody? I cried. It was magnificent. I was in awe. She's a genius. It was perfect. Brie, whose death was too quick for you? I assume that she's talking... Actually... It could have been Karu. I'm trying mm -hmm. to think of a quick one. I mean, she got oh, what she Kure. Yeah, Kure, yeah. I just thought it was done in such a nice style. I that love the way she killed Kure, because I literally she for a hot second live. was like, oh, she gonna let her live. And then she fell down dead, and I said, no, listen, Yaney gonna be the oh one God. to be messed with. She gonna be the one. You gonna have to watch Yaney. Um, <laughs> I, how do I feel about the ending? Um, yeah, like I told Shay, I reread that last two chapters at least four times between Friday, no, between Thursday and today. And I think I absorbed it better when I read it physically than when I was listening to it over and over. Um, cause I'm still right now, I don't remember Varane dying and I don't, I just like forgot about him in the, in the last scene or whatever and I still like rereading it today. I don't remember him dying. I'm glad he said there's you know there's no love. He died life. when a tempest manifested. Like he died in the Oh, oh okay. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah, okay. She's talking about like seeing the light light in him go out like as his body oh. is there. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. I like the ending. Um it was just the whole book experience and the way the story unfold as a whole i think the ending was very fitting and i'm excited to go to the next one and it's hard to be honest it's hard for me to not compare it to the ending of the fifth season they're nothing alike nothing alike but it's hard for me not to compare them and um the way that yaney addressed Inifa in the end i was like oh this reminds me of some stuff that happens in the Broken Earth trilogy. Um, and I'm, I really liked it. It just, I don't know. It was a little unsatisfying. Tiny, tiny, tiny bit. I still give it five stars. I still give it five stars. I wanted like three what more was paragraphs. Oh. I just wanted <laughs> like, like three paragraph. more paragraphs. Like, <laughs> like she only talked to Inifa for like a, a paragraph. Like a paragraph on the last page. You but know, they had a whole conversation like right before them. Mm -mm, I wanted more. This, this <laughs> is me. This is me. I still gave it five stars. This I always wants more though. Every single do, time though. she has an art with the book, it's like, I just wanted more. I just wanted more. I just wanted like wanted another cover. It was too short of a, well, you do your thing now, and I, we're going. I'm going on this adventure type of situation. I just wanted a little bit more commiseration between. I've been, you've been living in my body for this long, and we've just yes. split. You know, we just split a few minutes ago, y'all. Just this just happened. They just split. <laughs> like so, I wanted a little bit more of a conversation between the two of them. It was still great. Brie says I'm with Deidre. 
And she said that she, it was uh, Karu she was talking about earlier. She said her death was too quick for me. I wasn't, I didn't expect that. Um, I didn't, I, I think I should have known that godlings could die, but I didn't, I, I did not guess that would happen. Yeah. No, and they say I, that in the story. Yeah. Like, human blood. Everybody can die. Like, they but say I thought, that. Sorry. I thought, I thought Karu, both of Karu's parents, I assumed, were, were gods. Are we talking about Kuru, right? Yeah. Kuru, yeah, yeah. But, okay. yeah, they say so I don't know if y'all caught this, but they talk about in the, the the thing about the thing that kills them being the demon. demon. Blood? Right, yeah. the half humans, half godlings, their the blood. Humans have blood. So like, that's the only thing that could kill them. Except for apparently the actual three gods. Yeah, because then I feel like she can make life and then take away life, so. Yeah, because you just put the girl's hair and that was curtains. I was I thoroughly enjoyed it though. But Shamla, you've been trying to say something. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, for me. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for me, I was surprised um that it was a conclusive ending. Like we got like a close ending sort of um to Yanni's chapter, I guess, to this whole world. Uh, uh, at least so far, because uh, like Deidre, I can't help comparing it to the fifth season. The fifth season was so open-ended, but I did enjoy the last chapter, but like Deidre, I feel like there should have been more, like more exploration, more like her getting in, getting used to being this goddess. Like she just jumped in and she just like automatic to her, but yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, and I'm excited to see what shit Tempest goes through in the second book. You make a good point because Yana is like really just she takes to being a goddess, like you know. You know. But she explains that she does explain it. She explains that like once the transition happened, she knew and saw everything that she couldn't see because that's what happened in the transition of her becoming a god. That's what so, I'm saying. Like, give me some more. Give me more time with her just being a goddess. Like, I don't know what book two and three are even about. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. But <laughs> I don't care. You can tell me. But I just like. So you want to get it past like more days? I just want to maybe night. like give me the rest of the day to the sunset. Now that the night lord ain't ready to murder everybody, now that Samina's on the leash, give me a full day to conclude the story. It just was very not abrupt, but like it was very chapter. clean. It was so tidy, and I was like, damn. I wonder what they're doing now. Like where so, they at? You know. For the record, they are three different books. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I, I have a feeling that we're going to get one from each. Uh, no, nope. never. I think on the, to your point, Deidre, about like, you want more time with um, Enifa and Yanny having a conversation. Now, I, I didn't actually end up snatching the physical copy from Sister Rosie, because by the time I got to her house I was mostly done with the book and I was like well boo so I could only hear but it see a couple of things number one the fact that there was this Yaney like there's a Yaney who's the character and like there was a Yaney protect like a Yaney narrator and Yaney the narrator seemed to know everything that was gonna happen that's why she was like did I say that? No, not yet. There's a state. Like she would, she was kind of all over the place. So it seemed to me that that the narrator Yaney was the goddess Yaney. Like she was trying to remember her old life as a human, which is why she was like, I mean, I can barely remember this. Like here is my full name. Like it was very, it was for her to be, for Yaney the narrator to be telling the story of herself. It seems very detached. So that's why I feel like it was like her as a god where she was like, I used to be a human, but that's far and away from where I am now. And so in that way, I guess I feel like I had, we all had a lot of time with Amy the God actually, because like that's the narrator of the story. And there would be times in the plot where it would seem like 
she was talking to somebody else. And because I couldn't see it in my mind, I was like, is she talking to NFL? Like I, so it seemed like they had a full, like, I acknowledge exactly who you are. We're out, like we're, this is the moment of separation and we're having a last check-in. But it seemed to me that throughout the book, Yanny the goddess was talking to Enifa in a way. I'm so that's probably right. That makes a lot of sense. To that me. was my theory the whole book. Um, mm. And they do go back and forth. They do mm. throughout the story. Like, Enifa, uh, Yanny says something, and Enifa says something back, and Yanny's like, No, you're jealous. You don't like that I have this relationship. So, my theory for the story is I think the story that she's telling us is after she's transitioned to the guy. Yes. So I think she's talking to Enifa right after this transition has happened. And she's tell remembering the story of how she got to this point. Mm -hmm. And once we get to the part where they go their separate ways is the forward. end of that, that present. So I yeah, think her like, conversation is ending no, then no, and I'm no, just no. being greedy is what you're saying. I'm just that being was greedy. My, that was my theory. Okay. Right. Uh, okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. I still got the five stars. I was reading it, especially when I started going back to physical, because the way that the breakdown of the pages change, like it's an internal conversation, like between the two. So that was my my theory. Was what yeah, I, I wish I could see the format of those two, because the first time I read it, I thought she was talking to herself, which is a little bit. It's a, that's a different level of dissociative nearing schizophrenia. On the second read, now that I know that there's like, now I know it's how it's gonna end. I I started to suspect, but I didn't know because I couldn't see the format. But now, I feel venerated. Emma Ray, did you uh, say what you thought of the ending yet? Oh no, I didn't. I really loved the ending. I was with Shay in in in. Um, thinking like, oh, okay, they're having a conversation this entire book. So whenever it would get to those parts, I would read them like really, really slowly and like like in slow motion, if that makes sense. So I could make sure I was really absorbing what they were saying. Cause like to me, I was picturing like Yanny in a room writing down her story and like someone walking in and saying something to her. So I would slow it down to like try to remember further on, but I really liked the uh, the pace of the ending and like the visuals of it. And I um, I pictured everything as being like very very gray for a long time, like not really seeing any other shades of color until like the very very end when she was like, "It's love, like we gotta we gotta come together." Then it was like my vision started getting clear and I could start seeing colors again. And I just really liked that the writing made me think like that and view the story like that. Um, and it made me really, really excited for the second one and wondering where it was going to go because it did feel so like, and it's a very tidy, there's the end, move on now. And I was like, well, what's going to be book two? <laughs> and then book three, like, where are we going from here? Because I've never read this before. So I thought it was, I thought it was like, the feeling of like a cliffhanger but not you know does that make sense i don't know but i i really really enjoyed it and kay jamison is just amazing <laughs> I'm, it's so tidy to make sure. I'm so sorry i'm so sorry i didn't mean to cut you off what were you saying Deidre? no i just say it's so tidy that it makes you immediately want to pick up the next one and i'm glad that they're already published because i don't think i'd be able to wait very very well I was just saying, I'm not a good reader because, like, when it came to those parts, I didn't understand. I was like, well, this makes no sense. Let me just fast forward past this and then <laughs> get back to the story. <laughs> so, it's not really out of the theory for what happened there. Chloe said, Give me more now, high seas. What y'all talking about? Where is the night lord? You didn't say his name. Just whispering. Do people have a favorite seed with the night lord? I feel like people like the the whale eye and the abyss, and I was like, I like the first one better, honestly. Are you talking about the sex scenes? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just to be clear, <laughs> the second one. <laughs> Everyone likes the whale eye, and I don't get it. The whale eye took That's me. All I, I was remember. like, no, big ass whale eye. I was like. Child, I'm just like, okay, we could 
I don't know. I liked when he was in there murdering, you know. I was into that. Uh, I was turning people to black that. diamonds. Like that was my favorite. Um, and I definitely, honestly, I liked him in the end, too. Like, I liked, I liked, I liked him. Like, that for me, like, I think the sex scenes were, like, great. Like, I thought, specifically because, like, to me, I thought it was great that you, like, only barely talked about sex, but described this amazing experience. That's what I liked about it. Because it was, like, it wasn't a whole lot of he stuck this there and da-da-da. It was, like, nah, I'm, like, seeing heaven. And the way you described it, I was, like, I, I'd like to see heaven, too. But I, well, like. She did talk about I, I like I liked him. Like I just liked the way that he was. And I like that like I loved there was a part where she describes him as seeing him as a god and she says that he has so many faces like they were constantly changing but all of them were beautiful but not everyone could see them because you have to be a god to see them. And I just re think remember thinking that that is so central to him and his nature and it just was a beautiful way to ex to illustrate that and I just just him in general I love I love that he's very enigmatic and very like so the energy of Yaini when she's a goddess where she goes to Kudore and she's like I understand why you did it and what you did was wise and then Kudore is just dead that energy I feel like that energy could be very Naha and I like because like he was very calm when he looked at a tempest and was like, you've been dead for centuries. Like you were always gonna, I was always gonna kill you full stop. He was very calm with that. Like, I feel like in describing the Night Lord as a monster, like they're constructing this very like, the like monstrosity and chaos, they're constructing it in this very like spectacular way. But Naha was very calm. He was like, no, I am gonna kill you. But it was a very dignified declaration. Like, yeah, no, I'm like, there's no way that we are ever going to be lovers again. You're going to die. I just like the dignity of him. Like, he knows his nature. He honors his nature. And he shows it to you in multiple ways. He will show you this, like, ravenous running after you, like, strangling his own kid. Like, you can get that. But he had just he's just so multifaceted. That's not the only way that chaos and monstrosity function. He's like, I can freeze somebody or I can strangle you or I can just let you know that this is the moment that you die. Like I just like the different the different faces of Naha, so to speak. <laughs> It's this is it's my second read because before I was like I don't remember anyone's name except for Yanny and Naha and that's the whole truth and Sia I remember three names even when they said the cards I was like who is that I literally I was it was three names for me and that was it so real was even in and out I think my favorite scene of her talking about him in general I think it's when after um, Samina was like ripping him apart with that fake sunshine stuff and uh. Yaina goes to visit him and she has to try really hard like not to react or not to think about anything because he'll just like pick up on that and then like do it times a thousand. <laughs> I I think that was my favorite scene of him. If we're just talking in general. Um, so I, okay, so I I I've seen the comments about the Naha love. And so here's my my thought about Naha, because I'm like intrigued to see if y'all get where I'm coming from with this. So I think that because of the way we move in our society, we think a lot of the things that he did or does is bad. And in going back and rereading, right? Like, so Yana got mad and immediately like reacted to him choking Sia. But like on the read, that was him seeing how much of Inifu was in you, right? Like that was him seeing what the reaction was. But the thought is he's just this evil person and this is just him reacting. So like how much of it is it is it to y'all? Is it actually him being bad? Or when you think about it, is it no, that was a calculated thing that he did for a reason? I'm curious. For me, I think the whole time I was just like, it, gods are going to do what they're going to do. And it doesn't really make sense to try and think of them in human terms. Like 
I think even a Tempest who's like more orderly and like probably like more, I guess, I think it would be easier to understand as a person, I think does things that are like really beyond what I would tolerate in an actual person. <laughs> so I think I was just like, he's going to do what he's going to do. And I kind of just can't keep trying to think of him like I would another person. Like he's a god. I'm, not, I'm just not going to understand it. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt too. Was like, they're all going to make decisions and I'm just going to listen, I guess. <laughs> but um, I liked all the Naha scenes. I thought he was very, very, a very, very interesting um, character. And yeah, I don't know. I just, I don't think I super was in love with him. And I don't think I super hated him. I think I was just kind of in the middle of being like, oh, this is interesting. That scene, heaven scene, was wild. Like, I really liked that she wrote more of what the experience would be because yeah how do you write having sex with a god how you like how are you gonna really write like oh he did this and that like you you can write some of that but then it has to be like okay well what would the overall experience be and i thought that was so so well done <laughs> and absolutely amazing but i think his i don't know i think his character just showed a lot of like dark suffering and kind of the same like they're gods and they're gonna do what they want and we can't understand them which they keep kind of trying to sort of say of being like oh you're such a human whenever she'd be like oh well well you're doing this and you're doing that or she would like accuse someone of something or like call out certain attitudes and I think it was like Sia multiple times that was like oh my god you're such a human and then he would try like re-explaining something to her <laughs> or just saying that and leaving on his little glowing orb. <laughs> I think the biggest thing for me, for on the reread especially, and then thinking about, even thinking about like the fifth season, I think that like the, the perspective, I think is the most interesting thing. Cause like as God, so even like thinking about the sex scene, it can't be about the sex. Because that's always what it is. Like the difference between the God and the human is what you're focusing on. So for Jemison, like the difference is the is the perspective. You think about like you consider yourself Yani, Dari, whatever, whatever your whole long name is, and it's very, very grounded in the here and now. But for a God who doesn't have a people, like you came from the maelstrom. And like all these little people, like they think of them as NFS creations, not as our children or our people or like, it's very dissociative. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure if I said dissociative, they'd be like, that's such a human term. But like, they just seem so removed from everything because they have seen everything. And so like in describing, if we're thinking of like sex as like this, this joining, this vulnerability, this opening fully of the self, then it, I mean, yes, the body is experiencing pleasure, but like if you're experiencing intimately this other person, this other person is an entity that's a god, to experience them would be to experience everything that they see. So like when C is like it's like falling into the depths of creation or whatever he said, that's Naha's nature. So like you're fully experiencing that person. And I think that's what I like about Jimison and why I keep reading her even though I find her overwhelming is because there is still a very clear structure to how she's writing these characters even the ones that are super en enigmatic because even the other characters acknowledge that everyone's just acting according to their nature so even if it's like oh that didn't make sense to me well this is his nature hence like Sia aging and being weaker when he ages as opposed to when he's like a young child like all of it has to do with their nature and their perspective, like what they've seen versus what a human has seen. I think for me, I trusted Nahado more than I trusted Sia, just because like in the first few chapters, just because we knew that he was sort of being put out there as the evil force at first evil y'all can't see me but i'm putting air quotes up uh for for the in the beginning of the story and sia 
you never know what you get with a kid. You know what I'm saying? So like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know. And we, we, and you never know how a trickster is going to like want to play the game. <laughs> so, and we, and we were kind of being, Sia was kind of being presented as a trickster sort of at first. I didn't know if he was going to be a childlike god or a trickster. And I think he ended up sort of being a mixture. Um, so I, I, I sort of trusted him and like understood that he was doing things for a purpose. Um, it wasn't all apparent <laughs> at first, but I definitely felt like Nahado was doing stuff for a reason and he was testing um, Yina, Yaina, uh, and doing a lot of things. Like when he just showed up in her room that first night, or maybe it was the second night, and just sort of stood there, didn't say anything. And what she was, that was a test to see how she would react. I don't remember exactly what happened um, right now, but he, it was a test. He was just there trying to see if he could get a rise out of her, see what she would do, see if she would try to have sex with him or whatever it was. And I, I understood that, you know, it's kind of low hanging fruit to also be attracted to a person like the Night Lord. Um, so, and I'm, I mean, not, to, I'm not putting anybody down for being attracted, but like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, that's, that's too, that's too obvious. You know what I'm saying? Like there, there has to be more to this than them, him trying to seduce her. You know what I mean? I was just going to read some comments from the chart really quick. Yeah. Uh, Andrea says, I found Mahato's darkness deeply compelling and I appreciated Yana's compassion desire for him and his true nature. Um, Virginia Renee, I don't think Naha is evil. I think he's traumatized. It spoke volumes to that Yana recognizes this and intentionally decides not to take advantage of his new freedom and need for companionship. Um, Grisha Robinson, I agree with Emma Ray. It's not hate or love, just an interesting character, but I don't feel the swoony stuff. Um, C is very creepy and disturbing to me. I love C, creepy yet so childish. Um, Can I say something real quick that's just kind yep. of slightly off topic and kind of funny? So when I first read the book, sometimes when I read names, I don't read them how they're actually spelled, and then that messes me up. So I read Nahadoth as Nandor from the TV show What We Do in the Shadows, and all I could picture for half this book was Nandor the Relentless. <laughs> you don't know who that is. Yeah. Give yourself I'm, a I'm Google. It up. <laughs> and have a laugh. So that's funny. He's Wait, what'd you say? He's a vampire guy. Yeah, I said Nandor is the most ridiculous to me, so that's even funnier. Because like all I'm picturing is the scene where he's like trying to talk to the girl at the um at the gym, and I'm like, yo, that is not Naha Doth at all. He is not smooth whatsoever. Like, yeah, I kept telling my funny. husband, it's like I really ruined. <laughs> this character in this beginning because it, it took so hard for me to I looked up fan art to just get some other image in my mind because I was like I can't be picturing Nandor <laughs> not y'all just telling me there's fan art out there and I missed it like as Brie would say this is a hate crime and I don't appreciate it I mean uh Chloe Put some up in the Discord, Deidre. Where have you been? I'm just kidding. So I'm gonna just I'm head on out. I'm gonna head out. People who found <laughs> see a creepy? Did you also find Hoa creepy? I'm curious. Find who creepy? Oh, well, from the Broken Earth. Yes. I did. I never yeah. liked Hoa. Oh. People are like, yeah. he's cute. That's I'm like, is he creepy. though? Is he though? I didn't I find Sia creepy. I never I found Sia creepy. That's not at all. I didn't know. Hoa, like, I was yeah. like. I was hoping we would talk about Hoa and Sia in the same conversation. Sia's not so much as creepy as it's... Like, I liked Hoa immediately. And I liked... I didn't trust Sia, but I liked her. And I don't know if it's because of the, the kid presentation of both of them. I don't know. But both of them, I, I kind of... I liked them both at first. I trusted Sia with Yanni. Say again? I trusted Sia with Yanni. Because it was clear that Sia had a love for Enifa inside her and, and that he was like making a connection between Yaini and his mother. So I trusted him with that, but I 100% agree with you that Sia is a trickster figure. And so like, I trust him within certain parameters. And then after that, I'm like, 
if it's like, do you trust you to do X or Y? I'm like, I need more of the story. What are the circumstances? Who's in play? Like, you just have to know more with 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 Sia. But I trusted him with conditions. But I never thought he was creepy. I sometimes I even thought he was a little pitiful. Isn't the word, but definitely I felt like protective of Sia. And I think like a lot of characters did feel that protection of him because and, and like. Was it Kudaray who was like, he's chose, like his nature is really difficult to be, to have the nature of a child and to give yourself over to the rules of it. Like there's a certain vulnerability in choosing that course. Like even in the ways that you're able to maneuver as a trickster, like you're still vulnerable because you're a child. And he hints at being sexually abused by people in Sky just like as, as a routine. So I didn't, I never got to the point of finding Sia creepy. I thought that the way people interacted with him was creepy and that they were like sexualizing him as like uh, seeing as what his nature is and how he usually looks. But I just never, but see, I don't, I didn't see it as like presenting as a child. Like I know that's how he looks, but. That's how he was created. Like, that's the thing for me, though, is that that's how Inafa created him. So, like, it's not just a him thing, right? Yeah. Like, he's her child. So, I think that's the other part of it. Like, he can't change it. That's that's him. Her so, that's why for me, it couldn't be creepy because, like, you can't, he can't change that about himself. Like, there's nothing he can do about it. Yeah. I think I was. And in fact, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Jessica. No, I was gonna say, and in fact, he is at his in his best form and best shape the younger he looks. So, like, because there was that one scene where, or after he's been um, tortured, yeah. yeah, and so to to heal him, they have to play and play tag and all of that. And she didn't even understand that at first. So I didn't never find him creepy. I thought maybe the space where the globes was kind of creepy, but like him as a character, no, not yeah. Really. I don't know. No, no, I can see Hoa being seen creepy because of I'm on that train. He was creepy to me. Like he didn't even move in a human way. Yeah. You know, so I could see him, even though he presented as a young boy, he his mannerisms and the way he moved and like walked and stuff, and mm -hmm. even the way he spoke was weird. So I could see that being creepy, but for Sia, not so much. I think Would I should start out with sorry. I was, Regina was like, that was why it was creepy for her. And I was like, that's interesting. Because to me, all I thought about it was he was their first child. So Inafu was playing with motherhood. So I could see her wanting to have a child for forever. Like, I don't see, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't, I guess that was my thought in him and his creation and him being that, especially with how close he was to both of his parents. Like, that's very central to him as a character. Like, he's not betraying Naha, and he's not betraying Inafa. And he's the one of their two kids that is never going to do that. And so that that was my thought on his creation in him. I really I think I, I, I did. Oh, sorry. I didn't find him creepy, but I did. I think I said it on the first uh, sprints that I was wondering if he was inspired by uh, the Orishas, the Ibiji which are the twins and they're always children. And so they're also like immortal gods and they always stay as kids and they're the tricksters and they mess around and there's like rituals to, I know very little. So like, I'm really sorry if I'm just speaking incorrectly, just first off, <laughs> but I had read like a little bit about them and thought like, oh, that's interesting. I've never heard that before. I really only hear about like Oshun. <laughs> that's like kind of it. So I had like read a little bit. And then in reading this, I was like, oh, was he inspired by that? Cause it's sounding, it's sounding very similar. So, cause I had that in mind. I never found him um, creepy either. And you brought up a really good point about like, of course, a mom would always want to have her baby. Like that, that makes sense. <laughs> she just engineered to always have a baby. <laughs> I think I started out liking C and then I started like doubting him when he was like showing up in Yaina's room and then just like, being like, oh, can I sleep with you and stuff? And I was like, that can't be it. That can't be everything. There has to be something else here. But I guess it really was. That was it. That was everything. Yeah. I that and that's when I was like, poor Sia. Like, if like truly having the nature of a child, because at that age, like, because 
he's stronger like as a I don't know if he's like seven eight like at that age is when he seems like he's strongest and to like and you just want like you're at that age I feel like you're still cool with your parents being your best friends like you that's completely fine with you and for his dad to be at everyone's mercy and him to have to see his dad be abused then for him to be constantly abused in a way that like psychologically rips your innocence away like impossibilizes you from being a child like we're, when we're talking about him being like molested like how do you stay a child with that so all of that even more than naha all, that that constant sexual abuse would weaken Sia because children don't do that like that's not in the nature of childhood for you to constantly be exposed to molestation it happens but that's not the nature of childhood and so like to constantly have your nature weakened to constantly be seeing your dad be be attacked and brutalized and be subject to literally whatever people think of him as what he like sort of absorbs and becomes and then to have this like Hail Mary plan to get your mother back when the guy who like orchestrated all this is the one that killed your mother. Like that's just really hard. And so it like for me, it wasn't creepy when he was like, Can I sleep with you? Because just like Naha is having a hard time remembering that Enifa is inside you, but you're not Enifa. And it almost seemed like Naha was like, You'll never be her, and was trying to convince himself more than Yaney, because Yaney never said she wanted to be Enifa. Like that wasn't what she wanted and so like you're seeing your dad struggle against this connection you don't want to struggle against it because you want it to be true like children indulge in their fantasies and so if Sia wanted Yaney to be in a fun in a to be Yaney for their plan to have worked he would just try to live in that so when he was like can I sleep with you it's like this boy really just misses his mother and wants to be as close to the reality of her reincarnation or whatever the heck as soon as possible, even though obviously he knows the entire plan. He knows it's not really her, but he wants to live in the fantasy that it is her and like could be her soon. I just found him really sympathetic as a character. I felt the same way, especially like I said, reading it after my grandma passed. Like I'd give anything to sleep in the bed with her and her hold me and put her arms around me. So to think about you being this child and she's been gone for all these centuries, like to me, there was nothing, like it was like, this is the innocence of a child. This makes so much sense. And it hurts for me because like you said, for both him and Naha, like, and I think it's interesting. I, I feel like this is a, this, this hasn't been brought up, but it's interesting that it was harder for the men to differentiate the two people inside of her than the women because Kurure and Jacquard never, like, she's not our mother. Like that was never a thing for them. But for Naha and for Sia, it was the going back and forth with, are you, you're not, but you are, but I want you to be. And I just think even that is an interesting conversation to have. I think I had a last question before we wrap up everything. What do people think of what happens with the Aramari at the end? I know there's some people who are kind of like, why like at the end they still have their money um Descarta makes it out alive nothing really happens to him she even fixes his yeah even fixes his heart for him so he'll live to see the transition and Tiverl's put in charge I know some people are definitely like why would you do that and I was curious what people thought about you know Yana's version for vision for a world where gods and humans are more separate and like why she didn't just like trash sky completely in the Automari. I feel like um, since she was trying to get a world separate from gods and humans, that she was like, just leave them to their own devices. They'll do what they do. Whoever comes out, the winner comes out, the winner up comes out okay. And, you know, we'll go wherever we go and live our lives. And yeah, I think that's what she was going for. So at first I didn't, I didn't like, I was like, really, this is how you're gonna, after all this shit they did, that's how you're gonna leave them. Then I, after I think about it more, it makes sense to me. And she really kept the same energy. Like she didn't let Naha destroy a Tempest. 
And she was like, and we're not going to destroy this because that no one did the work before. <laughs> did accept put away statement. Yeah. I mean, it's gener generations of um, Aaron Mary got the world like it was. But I, to, to Shomla's point, if we're going to have a world without gods, then we can't do anything after the last thing that we just did. Because if we did wreck the Aaron Mary, that would be a huge interference from the gods. Y'all gonna have to figure all this out starting now, or there's gonna be chaos and all of it is gonna be our fault again. So the gods war already wrecked the world. If we do, if we have another mini god war right now by wrecking this, it's like that's the world order. So even if everyone hates y'all and wants y'all to disappear, if that actually happened, like Descartes said, there would be a huge grab for power. There'd be lots of bloodshed. And that would still be because of gods, because no one's going to take us out like that. But you, but like Yanni said, like, it's going to happen regardless because you don't have God's power. So I'm just going to let it happen. Like, I'm going to let your power slowly erode so that there's not an avalanche. Because if I just remove the entire stone propping you up, that's going to harm a lot of people besides you. But if I just let time slowly erode you, systems will change so that the world just sort of adjusts to y'all not being what you used to be. For me, I was just like, I thought, uh, I thought it worked because to me, like getting in, a, a, a God's being in y'all business is where this issue came from to begin with. And so, like, I got, like, she was like, now y'all going to pay for what y'all did, but y'all going to pay for the people that y'all been torturing. Because us not helping y'all no more is enough punishment enough because y'all going to struggle. And however they let the chips fall where they may, y'all going to get what y'all going to get. And I felt like, to me, that was fair because all I was thinking about is, like, the first time I read it was, like, I hope Dar in the next seven years come out and be like, nah, we, we coming for y'all. We coming for y'all because this 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 was just bad. So I I just remember thinking like, low key, I really wish God would do that in real life and be like, okay, I'm gonna just take this power struggle and then whatever the black people do to y'all, y'all just gonna have to deal with. And amen. So you know, I think I was initially again back to my initial reaction. I wanted more. You hear me? I wanted to see the walls crumble, Chloe. Don't laugh at me. I wanted to see the walls crumble. It could have been a nice little epilogue. Um, and here I we have there's, Chloe. There's a tree oh, in between Chloe. the castles. <laughs> yeah, like I wanted a little bit more. It still was good. I like the idea of letting the chips fall where they may. And you worrying about each and every one of those chips and how they're going to fall and where they're going to fall and who's going to drop them. I like the idea of that. And you worrying every other day, the rest of your life, where and how it's coming. I like that idea. But again, I would like to be a fly on the wall for that. I would like to have been. And maybe we'll get that in book two. I don't know. But um, yeah, I liked, I thought all of the punishments were fitting. I, um, especially for Descartes, because he has worked so hard to maintain this certain level, right? And he did all this stuff to, to affect a certain outcome. And here it is, like, he has to live to see not only his work go to waste, but the rest of the demise of his whole kingdom and everything around him. Um, so, yeah, that was good. It's it's also interesting that she chose Travril as the heir to the heir Mary. Like she chose I the most capable person. Love it. The it. most capable person out of everyone to run the heir Mary. So it's interesting why she chose him. You always got to watch the help. The help is always who you need in your corner. Like say hello to the janitor every single day. Say hello. To the elevator person say hello to the security guard every day and that will probably serve you a lot better than sucking um up to some i almost said something real bad sucking up to somebody else <laughs> um on that show i liked it because one it was one of the biggest slaps into carter's face because you like 
he's up there with Rolanda and Samina. And it's been said multiple times that he should be there. And you didn't see value in him. And she was like, all of y'all ain't got no place. It's going to be him. And I liked that you find out that part of the reason he brought her there was to kill her because he thought she killed her mom. And when you hear that, and you realize that now you are realizing that you are going to kill the only flesh and blood you had. Like that scene part, I thought was written really, really well. Because in the moment, you, like all of y'all are blinded by anger because y'all love y'all family so much. Like that's why we're here. And I just thought like to have that come full circle and find out that that was really the only reason she was going to die was because he thought you killed your mama was just chef's kiss for me. It's so ironic too. Like y'all act like your family is so disposable. That's why you have 511 cousins wandering around here so you can just grab one to summon the stone whenever it's time. But you literally orchestrated all of this because you love your family so much. You killed your wife because you loved her so much. And that's what you had to like show to show your commitment to the air Mary. Like it's just ironic that what like the the most defining characteristic of the air Mary that you all try to put forth and that people believe is the biggest lie. I just found that uh, found that ironic, and the way that that continues to like bite them in the butt, poetic justice. So that was all the questions I had for today. Um, was there any last thing people want to comment on? Um, coming projects or announcements? Um, Chloe, blink twice if any of my questions are going to be answered in the novellas. Blink twice. Okay. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I was like, blink, Chloe, blink. <laughs> Chloe looked you dead in your face, like. <laughs> it's like, with okay. that new globe, I guess. It's all in the new globe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so oh, I'm man. I got a question. So, like, we finished today. We got another Saturday in January. Are we waiting to the first Saturday in February to start book two? Um, asking for the friend that is me. I feel like you should wait because you're gonna finish it before we even get February, and then what you gonna do? I apply with um starting next Saturday if that's what people want to do. Um, yeah, I, I could can. host this friend or something. Oh, huh? Hmm. I can't wait. Okay, I've so been that waiting like the since the first I, week. <laughs> you finished it in a week. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's sort of the Discord we already started and finished book two. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Me yeah. finished book two, started book three. Book three right now. She's definitely on book three and texted me and was like, so I had to stop because it was really good. And I was like, you know, I'm going to just go back to book one because I'm already way too far ahead. And then, like, well, yeah, I see. Like, that's why I was like, I don't know. What are we not gonna do them next week and wait? Like, how are we doing this? Because your girl, I'm just saying, I don't know how we supposed to slow read this, Chloe. I know that was the intention, but I like, mean, February is a shorter <laughs> month, so we might as well start next week. That's our only saving grace. Let's go on and start next week because yeah. it's not a saving grace because we was like two weeks. <laughs> all of all of everybody on the screen had to pause themselves from continue to read. Not so, like, this for Saturday, we still gonna be done in two, and we start one early. We gonna be done the first Saturday in February. Is all I'm saying. It's all I'm saying. And we got we got Missy Elliott reading sprints next month. I'm just saying we gonna finish a lot faster, y'all. That just means we'll be way like super ready for questions. We're gonna have the whole story. We're gonna have an outline. We're gonna have a secondary title. Uh, we're gonna be ready. That's all I hear. That's what I hear. I love it. Yeah. I just wanted to say um, for anyone in the Discord, if not, join the Discord. But since it's all broken up into chapters, um, make sure you mute the chapters so you don't accidentally get a spoiler. Just you can do that if you did not know. Um, just, you know, 
if you're planning on waiting till February, we're all reading <laughs> immediately. You might want to mute some channels until until you get there. <laughs> Is that all the aspects? Cool, sounds good. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Uh, it was great talking with you and seeing you in the comments. Take care and see you sometime next Saturday. Bye.